Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 8th July 2017. I am Sagan Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company Superior Profit, or more importantly, how it can help you in your own trading, you may visit the website www.superiorprofit.co and click on the About menu. Let's start with the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on Superior Profit's trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, we will look at oil, gold, India's nifty future, and few forex pairs using Q technical charts. We'll also do the same for SPY, QQQ, DIA, and IWM, the USA broad market ETFs. Then we will look at broad market internal analysis, sector and industry analysis, through graphs and ranking table. Along the way, we may go through some of the trades posted in the community since our last class and look for potential trades for the coming week. Q&A is throughout the session. You may type your question in the Q&A panel and I will try to answer them as I go along. That was the last slide of the presentation. We'll now move to the live system. Let us start with US oil. Last week we mentioned that US oil was overbought. We were looking at it on this candle We had discussed that if US oil came down and tilted up, then we may have a go with flow long trade opportunity. Because it was overbought, we were not going to buy it last week. This week it indeed came down. Now, if it tilts back up, then it may give us a go with flow long opportunity. Right now, there is no trade at the right edge of the chart. Now we look at gold. Last week, we were watching this memory support line and we're looking for a possible bounce long trade if the support held. That is, if price came to the memory line and tilted up from there then we were looking to enter a bounce long trade. However, the memory didn't hold. Price gapped down on this candle and continued to go down. There was no stretch release signal. So we would not be able to take any box long trade at the right edge of the chart, GLD is oversold as seen from the stretch signal below the candle. If GLD can go back above memory support in daily or watermark support level here, then we may take a bounce long trade setup. However, we need to be careful of the memory resistance that is nearby. That is this memory resistance line. If price goes back up in next few days, 
there is a possibility of a bounce long trade setup because we already have exhaustion and price dropped rapidly to the support level. However, there is memory resistance line, so we need to be careful and enter long trade only if there is attractive reward risk ratio. Otherwise, we may have to wait for price to go up, break the memory line, come down and tilt up again to give us a go with flow long trade setup. On the short side, if price could go back up a little bit and till down, then it may give us a go with flow short trade opportunity. When and if it bounces up from this watermark support level in daily, that is the same time GLD will come to the weekly watermark level and tilt up from there. So we'll have a bounce setup from the watermark in both daily and weekly. We may watch out for that. Let's now look at Nifty. India's broad market Nifty futures was in uptrend for a long time. Now it has started to move sideways with almost equal highs and lows. There is no Q trade right now at the right edge of the chart because it is moving sideways and price is currently overbought. If it tilts down, it may give us a sideways market box short trade setup. We may look for that in the coming week. Let's look at some forex pairs now. Let's look at Australia dollar. Two weeks ago, we discussed about possible go with flow trend following long trade in Australian dollar. When this cyan flow color candle came, we could enter it using real time chart, probably the next day on the yellow candle. We would not enter the long at the end of the day on the cyan candle because it had an upper tail. Instead, we would use Q fine tune chart next day to enter the trade. Stop will be below the recent low that was never hit. Instead, it would hit the upper boundary line and profit will be booked. That was two weeks ago. Last week, we discussed about closing the long position in Aussie USD as price was overbought shown by the strange signal on top of the candle and because it was near the memory resistance lines, two of them coming from far, far away. We also talked about potential bounce short trade if price came down from the memory lines. That happened on this yellow candle And by the end of Friday at the right edge, price has gone down enough to cover the risk distance. That is the distance from the entry price for the bounce short trade to the stop loss. Because more than risk distance was covered by Friday, we would book the profit. As Aussie dollar was in strong uptrend in the last class itself, we had talked about the necessity to book profit quickly if the risk distance was covered. We had two successive profitable swing trades that we could anticipate beforehand. One was the go with flow long trade at the value area and one was the bounce short trade 
at the upper boundary. At the right edge, if OCUST goes up, it may give a go with flow long opportunity again, provided all the Q and ambiguous checklist conditions are met. We may keep an eye for that in the coming week. Let's look at Sing dollar now. Last week, we discussed about closing the previously taken go with flow short trade as more than this distance was covered. The go with flow short signal came on this magenta candle. With real time chart, one could probably enter the short somewhere in the middle of the candle. As price came down for two days on Friday of last week, we could book profit in the short trade. The decision to book profit was an useful decision as Sing dollar went up on Monday of this week. After Monday's large move up, Sing dollar moved sideways for four days in narrow range. Right now, SGD is inside triangle formed by memory resistance at the top and memory support at the bottom. We may wait for SGD to break out of the triangle before deciding on next trade's direction. This lack of direction is something that we will see in several broad market ETFs as we analyze them today. Let's look at SPY. We are looking at weekly backdrop chart on the left hand side, daily hop on chart on the right hand side. In the weekly chart, SPY is moving sideways with narrow range candles. On Friday, price bounced up and it bounced up precisely from the memory support line. This was an easy day trade long opportunity using the Q fine tune real time chart. If you were using Q fine tune chart, either on Q global or Q elite, you could draw the memory support line price level on real time chart and as price came to that level and went up from there on five minute real time chart it was possible to take a precise very low risk long day trade opportunity at the right edge spy is inside a triangle bounded by resistance memory at the top and support memory at the bottom. We may wait for SPY breaking out of the triangle before deciding on next trade's direction. Let's look at QQQ. Again, we are looking at weekly backdrop chart on the left hand side and daily hop on chart on the right hand side. In the weekly chart, QQQ is moving downward, unlike SPY, which was moving sideways. However, the decline is in an orderly fashion. Friday, QQQ also bounced up, and that bounce up was from memory support line in weekly instead of daily, as was the case of SPY. At the right edge in the daily chart, QQQ is inside triangle and there is no Q standard trade setup. The triangle is formed by resistance memory at the top and support memory at the bottom. Again, we may wait for QQQ breaking out of the triangle before deciding on next trade's direction. Let's look at Daya. Same weekly backdrop chart on the left hand side, daily hop on on the right hand side. Dia is moving sideways also and in narrow range. 
in the daily chart. There is no scope of entering any box short strain that is applicable to sideways market because of the very narrow range of the move. We may wait until dia becomes more volatile before considering the next trade. Now we look at the last of the USA market ETFs, IWM. Weekly backdrop chart for IWM on the left hand side, daily hop on chart on the right hand side. IWM is moving sideways like dia, however, the range is much wider. It may be better to wait for IWM to break out of the narrow range before deciding next trade direction. So for all the four broad market ETFs in the USA market, we see there is indecision in the market. And even for India's Nifty futures, we saw the same sideways market move. It may be better therefore to wait for clearer direction before taking the next trade. Every week we look at broad market internals by using NASDAQ composite index weekly chart on the left hand side and NYSE composite index weekly chart on the right hand side. Because this analysis is using broad market composite indices and using weekly charts, the conclusion is to be used for longer term investing, not to be used for swing trading and certainly not for day trading. This broad market internal analysis is also available from our website by going to the home and then clicking on broad market menu. For now, let me look at the snapshot. In the weekly chart, NASDAQ is moving sideways. In the weekly chart, NYAC is also moving sideways, though it is making waves going up and going down. At the right edge of the chart, if NYAC goes down next week, then it will create a false upside breakout price trying to go up above the watermark resistance level and then coming down. If that happens, we may keep an eye on stocks that are also topping and look for potential short opportunities. As standard in superior profit way, if that toppling or false upside breakout happens in NYSC composite index, we would like to short stocks for whom the industry is also showing weakness from QA industry analysis. And if the stock is also weak fundamentally, that is even better, though it is not required for swing trading. Fundamentals don't change week to week. So we don't need to look for weak stocks before shorting. However, we at least like to have weakness in the industry before shorting a stock. And similarly, strength in the industry before going long in a stock. So the market indices themselves are now moving sideways. For a long time, we were saying that it is moving in uptrend, both for NYSE and NASDAQ. But from this week, I think we can say, looking at the chart, that they are moving sideways. As far as the internals are concerned, on Thursday, there was a large dip. However, this analysis is to be used at the end of the week. I had shared the Thursday's snapshot in the graduates club. And I thought that if that weakness in internals continued, then the market may be toppling down. However, the weakness in internals was not there at the end of Friday. 
out of the six internals that is new high low advanced decline and up down volume for nasdaq and for nysc we see that one two three four four of them actually increased for the week only two that is new high low for nasdaq and new high low for nyse decline still the new high low for nyse ended positive as did for other internals only new high low for nasdaq closed negative so in aggregate we conclude that the broad market indices are now moving sideways over longer period the internals had been weak because they couldn't surpass earlier highs true for all the internals and for this particular week the internals are actually strong bullish the sideways market move in the composite indices and the sideways market move in the broad market etfs shows indecision and we will see that and probably little bit of weakness in the sector and industry analysis that will follow every week we look at sector performance using 10 broad market sectors across three review periods the red bar shows the performance of this week blue bar performance of one week before the red bar and the green bar two weeks performance before the blue bar together they constitute four weeks or about one month of performance market indecision and weakness is displayed by majority of sectors ending negative for the week seven sectors declined and three gainers increased by smaller percentages so any sector for which the red bar comes to the left of the zero point ended the week negative which is true for seven of the sectors only industrials financial and basic materials ended positive but the percentages were much lower than the declining sectors there are now five sectors that declined for all the three review periods these five sectors are utilities telecom technology which had been weak for a while now even non cyclical that is considered defensive sector and cyclical so the weakness is spread across diverse sectors previous week we had seen several industrials improved rank this week industrials has become the top performing sector this is why we study the rank improvements every week it helps anticipate market moves i had taken a trade in cece an industrial company and posted it in the traders community that trade closed with profit even though the broad market failed to go up let's look at this trade from our community page I posted this trade idea industrial stock at memory support with bullish flow on July 3rd the chart at that time looked like this we are looking at weekly backdrop chart on the left hand side and daily hop on chart on the right hand side I noticed that CECE provides technologies to industrial companies. At that time, in the weekly market roundup on 1st July, we noticed that industrials were getting stronger. That may provide tailwind to this stock. 
it had declined after last earnings but has stabilized after that exhausting move with extremely high activity the previous earnings drop was here accompanied by extreme high activity and since then price in the daily chart was moving sideways forming a nice base in the weekly chart since the bullish headwind on the week of 2nd june this diamond symbol at the bottom of the candle cece couldn't go down we always keep an eye on such bullish and bearish headwind signals in this case the bullish headwind could capture the bottom we see that here the bearish headwind could catch the very top and again here we see that bullish headwind could catch the very bottom i had discussed in earlier sessions how we can use options back spread setup to trade the headwind with extreme low risk and very very high probability the back spreads would make money if the stock went below the headwind candle it would also make money or very little loss if the price went up above this bearish headwind candle we can set up back spreads like that and i discussed it in one of the earlier classes where i traded with back spread for valiant so such back spreads could be traded effectively at this bearish headwind this bullish headwind and this bullish headwind as well we always make decisions at the right edge of the chart as of 3rd july when i posted it at the right edge of the weekly chart the backdrop candle color had turned cyan that is a bullish color and also a bull release signal the up arrow had appeared at the same time in the daily hop on chart cece bounced up from memory support with bullish flow candle the cyan color also a very bullish shape candle it was at pendulum low that is a very low price attractively low price seen from the thumbs up symbol at the bottom of the candle so based on this analysis i thought of taking a long trade and also shared it in the community i also looked at the company's fundamentals using q vital this q vital fundamental analyst can compare a stock like cece with either automatically retrieved peers or manually selected peer stocks all we have to do is simply look at the color coding and the main valuation criteria are in the first six columns green or blue means strong and red or magenta means weak instantly we could see that in terms of earnings reliability cece was strong relative to other stocks in its industry group the relative value was strong and its intrinsic value that is value in itself considering its dividends earnings projections etc were also very strong the other valuation matrix of ev evida was also good it was paying a nice dividend one of the top scorers for dividend yield percentage and it had a short squeeze potential so there were many fundamental factors in favor of the trade let's see how the trade played out i shared the initial post on 3rd july and on 6th july this is how the chart looked like cece was identified as a bottom catching long opportunity on this cyan candle 3rd july and on 6th july in just two trading days if you remember market was very much down on that day cec hit the white direction line and also the upper boundary 
both of which are profit target for swing long trade and the position would be closed at that point. If you look at CEC today, then you will see that it is stable. The stock is still at low price and there may be an opportunity to take a long. I had exited the trade as it hit the wide direction and upper boundary line but I may consider the entering long again. Back to sector analysis. Financials gained for all the three review periods. We'll see the strength in financials from the sector ranking as well using QH. However, it is looking tired now as the percentage increases are reducing. We can see earlier the percentages were bigger, especially if we compare one week before and this week, then financials has increased, but with a much smaller gain. And if we look at the two ETFs, XLF and FAS, FAS, both are at weekly watermark resistance levels and both have bearish headwind signals as well. We are always careful of bearish headwind as a potential reversal signal and also careful about deep watermark levels or memory resistance level. So it may not be the right time to enter long in financials right now. Better to be cautious in my view. Let's have a look at the FAS chart. We are looking at weekly backdrop chart on the left hand side as usual and daily hop on chart on the right hand side. In weekly backdrop chart, financial ETF FAS is overbought as seen from the stretch signal on top of the candles and it is at watermark resistance. Coming from the left hand side, which was formed near the previous bearish headwind signal. Candle shape is bearish with upper tail. In the daily hop on chart, FAS displayed bearish headwind on Thursday. On Friday, which is the last candle, it has an inside candle with narrow body. So price tried to go up above the watermark level which was present in the weekly chart as well and now it has come below that with a bearish headwind signal however we are aware of the memory support line that is nearby so maybe cause us before taking any short trade i think it is not the right time to take either long or short in financials right now so we looked at the 10 broad market sectors. Let us now drill down to industry analysis. For industry analysis, we start with the best performing industries. Footwear continues to be the best performer as it was in the last week as well. Aluminium also continues to be one of the best performers. However, many stocks in this industry, if you look up using Q charts, are overbought. One may be cautious with new buy position. I will stay away from that. Defense industry is up. However, several well-known defense stocks are overbought as seen from stretch signal and are near watermark resistance. One may be cautious about new long entry again. Instead, one may look for swing or day trade short opportunities provided Q charts and Q edge industry rankings show bearishness in the coming week. Defense increased with a small percentage but we may 
keep an eye on txt and lmt for potential shock provided the industry weekends and of course the charts also have to show appropriate signal let's have a look at these two charts this is the daily clean chart template on txt a defense stock textron it is moving sideways for the entire year actually from the beginning of january effectively it is moving in narrow range when it does so you can trade very profitably at the stretch release signals bull release at the bottom bear release at the top using nice option setups at the top we can trade with short call vertical at the bottom we can trade with short put vertical or we can trade with put back spread at the top and call back spread at the bottom all the stretch release signals could be traded for the entire year in this way and all of them would turn out to be profitable however we finally make decision at the right edge of the chart and at the right edge of the chart we see that textron tried to come to the memory resistance as well as the watermark resistance level and it closed below the resistance level thereby creating a false upside breakout on friday it tried to go up after thursday's drop however still closed below the resistance level so if it goes down next week then it may give us a box short trade opportunity that may be traded again with short call vertical or put back spread options it could be treated with short stock position as well if the options bid ask spread is not narrow enough then i don't like to trade with options in that case i like to trade with stocks we not only look at this q technical chart but using 360 degrees approach it is better to short txt only if the defense industry shows weakness and those of you who have q edge desktop version can open the tool any day or any time of the day and you will be able to see the latest up to date status on all the industries so you will be able to recognize if defense industry is weakening we don't always have to see that defense industry is declining in itself but if we see its rank is deteriorating faster than other industries that is also showing weakness and then we may use the chart setup on q global or q elite to take the short trade so having q edge desktop version is always useful to align more edges to your trades favor so this was txt let's look at lmt also lockheed martin here we are looking at lockheed martin with clean chart template if we are looking for sideways market box long or short trade setup or exhausting market bounce long or short trade setup then it is enough to open the clean chart template it has less indicators and we can identify the trade setups more easily on the other hand if we are looking for go with flow directional trades or headwind reversal trades then we open the hop on charts it becomes easier to identify go with flow and headwind trade from those hop on charts we are looking at lockheed martin now lmt it is overbought 
at the right edge of the chart as seen from the stretch dot on top of the candle. It ended Friday with candle that has upper tail. It still closed above the watermark level. It has now crossed the watermark level. If it goes down next week, then it will create a false upside breakout. And that may give us a day trade short opportunity or a swing trade short opportunity. Again, it is better to short LMT only if the defense industry shows weakness. Remember, defense is now one of the best performing industries. So we would not like to short any stock unless the industry itself is starting to show weakness. So we looked at industry analysis for these two different stocks. We looked at technical analysis. What about fundamental analysis? If we use QVital peer analysis, we see LMT has worse growth than TXT and is also overpriced. Therefore, given the proper chart setups, it may be better, that is with more edge to the trade, to short LMT than TXT. Shall we look at the QVital fundamentals? With the updated release, we have included the filter criteria or selection criteria in the scorecard tab also. It is also there in the input tab. You may use the input tab, especially when you want to enter manual list of peer stocks. Or when you want to have a look at the basic details first, like name, what business they are in, etc. If you are simply trying to find which stock is strong and which stock is weak in a peer group that is automatically generated based on selection of industry, sector or country as the common factor, then we can start with the scorecard itself. It makes our life a little bit simpler and trading decisions faster. Let us look at LMT. Leave the peer relation to industry. Choose maximum 25 stocks to display. I choose that because it fits on my computer screen. Click the peer button to retrieve the peers. It shows that it has fetched Lockheed Martin and 26 stocks in the peer group now. Click on the calculation button. It shows that QVital scorecard is being calculated. It has updated now. If we look at earnings quality, that is how consistent or reliable earnings is from quarter to quarter, then LMT is stronger. In terms of relative value and internal value, both are in the medium range with yellow color. There is no short squeeze in LMT and no short squeeze in TXT as well. If we look at the other valuation criteria, EV EBITDA and P score, we see for LMT they are red, whereas for TXT they are green. That is comparing across these 26 stocks TXT has a better valuation and LMT is overpriced. If we look at the growth matrix, that is EPS growth and revenue growth over five and three years, we see that LMT has more reddish and yellowish color. TXT has more green colors. Therefore, both in terms of this growth criteria as well as the valuation criteria of EV, EBITDA and PE, LMT is the weaker one. That is why I mentioned that if the industry shows weakness and the charts have proper setup, 
then I will prefer to short LMT over TXT. Both may have valid short opportunities in the coming week if defense industry starts to show weakness. Very objective way of analyzing using industry charts as well as fundamentals, isn't it? I call it 360 degrees analysis. Back to industry's top performers. Overall, aerospace and defense and industrials dominate the best performers. The strength in the industrials were identified one week ago itself using QH rank improvement analysis. This week also we look at rank improvements and CECE trade was closed with profit that we already looked at. Let's now look at was performing industries of the week. Industry decliners are spread across diverse industry groups, showing weakness across the whole market. Gambling decline also. Gambling industries decline was reflected in several stocks going down from pendulum high price levels. Pendulum high means it is at very high price and those are the times we start looking for shorts. Similarly, when a stock is at pendulum low, especially for long term investing, we start looking for longs. Win and MGM came down after displaying weekly bearish headwind. We always keep an eye on headwind as possible reversal signal. Las Vegas Sands LVS declined after displaying successive bearish flow candles in daily and at the same time completing a false upside breakout in weekly. Let's have a look at Las Vegas Sands. We are looking at weekly backdrop chart on the left hand side and daily hop on chart on the right hand side. LVS displayed bearish flow candles on 27th and 29th June. Looking at the gambling industry's weakness, if you are using the QH sector industry analyst, you could do that in real time. You could take low risk and high probability shots using hop on this template or even more precisely using fine tuned real time charts. While these two bearish flow candles appeared in the daily chart, at the same time there was false upside breakout in the weekly chart. Price tried to go above the watermark resistance level that was created by earlier bearish headwind. That bearish headwind caught the top very well. At the right edge, price was trying to go up above that watermark level and came down. And this price level of watermark was precisely the point where these two bearish flow candles appeared in the daily chart. So using those information, one could take a shot at the bearish flow candle, especially the second one. And as LVS hit the yellow direction line, that is a profit target, the short swing trade would be closed with profit on Friday, 7th July. At the right edge, LVS is oversold as shown by the stretch dots at the bottom of the candles using superior profit guideline we are not going to initiate any short at such oversold levels so from all these analysis you can see exactly how me and other superior profit traders are able to combine chart signals very visual signals with industry analysis also visual and now fundamental analysis also done visually and make very objective low risk trading decisions that have high probability of success. 
and it's not just for the sake of saying it is high probability because we are able to combine chart technicals with industry strength weakness and fundamental strength weakness it really has the best possible chance of success the trades that i share in traders community you all have access to that you can see the success rate is pretty high i hope you are following the trades in the traders community as well there is a lot of learning that you can gain from the trades i share the charts are not difficult to interpret the q edge industry sector analysis and the q vital fundamental analysis all are color driven anybody can read it what may be difficult sometimes for people is to be disciplined the community shows how such discipline trading is possible coming back to the worst performing industries we look at las vegas sands you may look at win and mgm on your q system now if we look fundamentally l dorado research eri is the weakest l dorado dropped rapidly if we look at q charts after signaling a q box short setup that appeared on 14th june so using q vital we could already know that it was one of the weakest using q global we could see that it was at pendulum high and we could be ready for shorts and we could indeed take the shot on 14th june and make significant profit again combining the fundamental weakness with the chart weakness let's look at q vital first and analyze eri we'll use the live system type the root star click on the pr button to get the prs it has fetched eldorado results and its prs click on the calculator it is retrieving the data and then it will calculate the q vital statistics it is updated now all we need to do is look at the color coding of the first row that is for eri eldorado results and instantly looking at the color coding we can see both in terms of relative value and intrinsic or internal value it is one of the weakest the same weakness we can see from ev ebitda valuation score and pe the other valuation score on top of that it has no growth information so this is a stock which has no growth information valuation and growth it is weak and therefore it would be a prime candidate for short if it was starting to go down on the q charts let's have a look at the stock chart we are looking at eldorado resorts weekly backdrop chart on the left hand side and daily hop on chart on the right hand side again a bearish headwind signal came in the weekly backdrop chart of eri in the week ending 16th june that candle also created a false upside breakout when price tried to go above this watermark resistance level which was at the point of the earlier bearish headwind it tried to go above that watermark level but failed to stay up and come down so it created a false upside breakout in weekly at the same time that the bearish headwind came in weekly there was a false upside breakout in daily hop on chart as well in daily chart also it tried to go above this watermark resistance level failed to remain up and come down it was at pendulum high a very high level indicated by the thumbs down signals a point where we start looking for shorts 
so when price came down with this bearish magenta flow candle color and created a false upside breakout with heavy activity indicating potential exertion we could take a shot precisely at this point using q fine tune chart or we could take at the end of the day using this hop on daily chart if we did that we could book profit at the yellow direction line that is our initial profit target and eventually it came and hit the lower boundary at the right edge of the chart in the weekly chart as of this friday's close i see that price is right at the memory support line in the daily chart we see that the candle is indecisive and there is a bull release signal the oversold condition is not there anymore so looking at the memory support and the bull release indecisive candle we are not going to take a new short trade right now on this stock that was an analysis of multiple gaming stocks combining industry fundamental as well as technical analysis now we are looking at industries with biggest rank improvements the 160 industry groups are ranked from 1 to 160 one being the top ranker the best performer and if there is a rank improvement like in case of mortgage reit trade which was ranked about 135 one week ago and now it is ranked 41 something like that this is a big rank improvement in one week as we keep seeing if an industry is showing rank improvement in one week not always but often it ends up being one of the best performers in the next week that is the value of using this rank improvement analysis and we look at that every week gold is down we saw that from the gld chart however gold miners rank improved will it foretell the gold mining stocks going up next week i had a look at several gold mining stocks in america there is no obvious long trade right now no standard q trade setup you may keep an eye on gold miners and look for potential long if the unambiguous checklist conditions are met you can look for the trades simply by running q sonar you don't have to go through each chart one by one as i discussed in previous sessions fundamentally if we use q vital to analyze we see that the american gold miners are not that strong relative to some of the gold miners in australia i am actually holding some long position in gold miners those are in australia what about semiconductors semiconductors were weak few weeks ago this week it had a big rank improvement it was almost close to 160 it was close to 160 one of the worst possible ranks and now it improved to 70 something now though it improved in rank semiconductors are still down for the week so remember rank improvement doesn't mean that it is top performer what we have seen is that if an industry improves rank in one week next week it may become one of the best performer this week semiconductors improved rank significantly but still it is down for the week we can watch out for short the pullback opportunity excel nx xilinx may give us a go with flow short trade opportunity if it goes down it is also fundamentally weak as seen from q vital let's have a look at the chart and the q vital fundamentals we'll see that 
xilinx is weak fundamentally but the weakest one that is cavm that has already dropped and is oversold you may have a look at cavm and you will see it is already oversold so we are not going to look for shorts there right now instead let's have a look at xlnx chart and also its fundamentals here we are looking at xlnx with weekly backdrop chart on the left hand side daily hop on chart on the right hand side we see that the backdrop candle color is bearish that is magenta price is coming down with lower high the lows may be at approximately the same level highs are coming down price is at value area it tried to go up next week if it tilts down with a flow magenta color candle in daily chart then it may give us a short opportunity that is a trend following short opportunity we have memory support line at the bottom so if we have such a trade setup we need to see if we have attractive reward risk ratio acceptable reward risk ratio our reward should be at least as much as the risk before we take the trade let's also look at its fundamentals in a matter of minutes we can retrieve all the pairs of zillings it has found only two 26 okay it has found 26 so 25 plus zillings itself we can click the calculate button to calculate q vital statistics we can instantly see that in terms of relative valuation internal valuation it is very weak one of the weakest absolute weakest one is actually cavm which has poor earnings quality as well however you may check out the stock chart cavm is already oversold so we are not going to look for short in that zillings has good earnings reliability but overpriced the valuation is too high already and if we look at growth criteria it has very poor growth so this is again a good combination where growth is poor and the stock is overvalued that's a good stock to look for short and the chart shows that if it goes down next week it may give us a go with flow short opportunity that will combine fundamental with technical the third angle is we would like to see using qh real-time status that semiconductors are weakening that way we'll have maximum edges in favor of our short trade that was our analysis of industries with biggest rank improvement i didn't find many attractive long opportunities that is probably because as we saw all the broad market etfs are moving sideways and from sector analysis we saw majority of the sectors actually went down and many sectors are now down for three successive review periods that doesn't show strength it is normal that we don't find many long opportunities right now let's look at industries with biggest rank declines rank decliners are spread across diverse industry groups we saw that for the worst performing industry as well this shows that the weakness is not limited to only certain industries it is across the entire market if we look for pattern then two of the rank decliners are related to real estate services and two of them are related to apparel and accessories now if we look at apparel and accessories we have discussed them in the past these two industries where the 
worst rankers for long time close to 160 then they started to go up we had some profitable trades in L brands etc that were shared in the community those trades are closed now for this week if we look deeper though apparel and accessories declined in rank the ones that are strongest seen from q vital are holding on to the support and they may give long signal next week now if the market drops every stock may drop with that however there are few stocks like foot locker and cores michael cores k o r s both have attractive balance of valuation and growth in case of short we looked at xilinx poor in growth and overvalued now we are looking at potential long we are happy to see two companies which have good valuation and also have good growth so let's look at the real time q vital fundamental analyst fundamental analysis made easy by q vital instantly we can see that in terms of internal value foot locker is very attractive relative value is medium its earnings quality is very high we have an added advantage of a potential short squeeze if we look at the growth parameters it is all greenish so in terms of growth also foot locker is very strong the other company i found is cors michael cors it's even better than foot locker earnings is reliable relative score is actually the best possible score of 100 internal score also very high again we can just look at the color coding blue means very strong and for course also we have nice growth as seen from the eps and revenue growth criteria they are all green let's look at their charts foot locker this is a stock we discussed earlier as well we looked at the support line in weekly and we mentioned that price has gone below that with extreme high activity over successive weeks and if price could go above the support in weekly it would create a nice false downside breakout in the daily we see that after a sharp drop which started from the earnings drop there was a very sharp drop then a bullish headwind came since then price is not able to go down it is gradually going up once again using the bullish headwind signal you could trade easily with call back spreads and that would be already profitable by now at the right edge of the chart we see that foot locker is holding steady if you take a long trade there is a very low risk entry opportunity both using daily chart as well as using real time fine tuning chart let's look at cores k o r s in the weekly chart using backdrop template we see there was a support watermark level price tried to go down below that at the time of earnings it went down with extreme high activity but immediately went back up with very high activity completing a false downside breakout with potential exertion in the daily chart we see that once price went down after earnings it immediately came back up it created a higher low created a memory support line and at the right edge it is sitting nicely on top of the memory support at value area where three direction lines are coming together the yellow magenta and cyan next week if price goes up 
it may give us a low risk go with flow long trade setup you may enter it using daily chart or using real time fine tune chart especially if you see the apparel and accessories industries are strengthening then we'll have all the three factors in favor of this trade fundamentally course is strong both in terms of growth and valuation the chart is looking nice for a low risk entry and if the industry is also getting stronger next week then you will have all the factors in favor of a long trade in course let's continue with our apparel industry discussion we looked at foot locker and course we can look at l brands we had a profitable long trade earlier this week l brands declined sharply with extreme activity after same store sales data came out apparently it was disappointing data and the stock fell sharply we may look out for potential bounce from weekly watermark level let's have a look at the chart we can see that in the daily chart both on thursday and friday l brands dropped with extreme high activity in the weekly chart it is near watermark support level in daily chart if it goes above the daily watermark support level it will create a valid bounce long trade opportunity bounce long trade opportunity doesn't need us to look at the weekly chart if it has a sudden drop then closes above previous day scandal with extreme high activity surrounding the down move and up move then we have a valid very low risk bounce long trade opportunity again the bounce long can be taken very nicely with call back spread with very minimal risk if price goes up on monday and we can structure a back spread where the legs are at the high and the low of friday's candle then we will have a profitable trade so long as the stock closes above friday's high or we will also have a small profit if it closes below friday's low only area where we will have loss is inside the friday scandal so if we take one month two month expiry it is very unlikely that after such sudden drop with that extreme activity it is going to close exactly within this candle that is speaking technically if we consider pure statistics the implied volatility will show that the chance of stock closing exactly within friday scandal is also very small the stock is fundamentally strong you may check with q vital it is at pendulum low and now it may have a very low risk technical entry point so you may keep an eye on that i am already long in an apparel stock i shared it in previous sessions that is finish line i am still holding it it hit the profit target and i saw it is starting to go down little bit let's have a look at finish line some time ago finish line came to the watermark support level tried to go down and then reversed back up in the daily chart it was accompanied by heavy activity so that created a box long trade setup also you can say that was a bounce long trade setup if you consider this as a sudden drop so it was a combination of box and bounce long trade setup fundamentals of this stock was also very strong and when it reached the yellow direction line it hit my profit target i saw that it was overbought it was near a memory resistance that was coming from far far away 
and it had a candle with upper tail. So I didn't want to close the stock. Instead, I sold some call on it. I was expecting it to move slightly down or move sideways for a few days and then go back up. So as of Friday, about one week has passed. The stock is moving sideways. So the call I sold is making money. On Monday, if I see if the stock is continuing to go up, I will sell the call with profit and continue to hold my stock, expecting it to go up further. However, if the stock now starts moving down, then my call options that I sold will make profit and I will close the stock also with profit, with a protect profit stop somewhere at this price level, a nice round number around 14. That was a look at apparel and accessories industry coming from biggest rank decliners. Let us have a quick look at industry and sector analysis using QH, the desktop version. So every time we open the QH, sector industry analysis tool, desktop version, then the sector analysis tab will have the latest up-to-date information, not only for the 12 monthly periods, but also for the most recent 10 days and five days. Industry analysis will have the same information for the 160 industry groups for the 12 monthly periods, and again for 10 days and five days period. Also, there is a button now on both the industry analysis, sector analysis. If we click this button, either on the sector analysis tab or on the industry analysis tab, you can click any one of them. That is the sector industry button. It will reflect the data in the other two tabs, sector work area and industry work area. So we can do all the slicing, dicing, sorting on these two work areas. These are not locked, whereas sector analysis and industry analysis, these two tabs are locked so that by mistake, we don't mess up the formulas. There are complex formulas and data retrieval operations going on in the first two tabs. We created the work areas for sector and industry. You can do all the kinds of sorting slicing, dicing, copy, paste. So let's have a look at sectors over a monthly period. And we can see top three ranking sectors over monthly period are financial, healthcare, industrial. Remember, financial, healthcare, industrial. If we look at the weekly period, we can see it is financial and industrial. So healthcare has dropped out whereas technology has come inside. Let's look at the bottom performers in the same way. Monthly period, we see telecom utility technology, where weakest over monthly. Remember, telecom utility technology. If we look at five day period, it is telecom, but utility has moved out. Technology has also moved out. With this, we can see telecom is continuing to be weak, and that is reflected in the worst ranking possible 10 of all the 10 sectors. It is weak over monthly period, recent 10 days, also recent five days. Cyclical consumer goods and services, they weakened significantly. And energy, which was weak for many monthly periods, showed some strength and then weakened again. Let's look at the industry term. Let's again sort it across the month one period. We can see the top 10 industries. We colored them with red. These are the top 10 industries across the monthly period. If we now sort them across latest five day period, then we see, let's make it bold case. These are the best performers in the five day period. 
so we see some of the red colored ones are not in bold anymore so that means banks which was strong over monthly period has weakened and we can see that it declined from rank 2 to rank 4 and now to rank 11. Investment services declined from 8 to 13 to 16. Now that is very very useful information. We can see the changes taking place very objectively in front of our eyes instead of looking at in my view extremely unreliable media services whether it is tv channel or websites we can see what is going on so when i looked at this i thought could there be a stock in investment services that is at the very top where i can short it at the very top maybe at pendulum high and remember we saw there were bearish headwind in financial etfs so I found a stock, MBIA. Let's look at MBIA's fundamentals first. The ticker symbol is MBI. The Thomson Reuters symbol is also MBI. It has found all the peers. Let's calculate the Q vital statistics. And we can see instantly that it has very poor earnings quality. It has very poor relative value. It is having very poor internal value. And it has very high short interest rate. Now, short interest can be used or interpreted in two ways. If a stock is very low, at pendulum low then we see short interest high then that may be a short squeeze opportunity even if a stock goes up slightly because of technical bounds the short covering will fuel the rally further but in this case the stock is at very high point that we can see from technical charts it is overvalued so here the interpretation of short squeeze and short interest high is that some very well-known people have shorted it. Usually retail traders don't short a stock at the top. They tend to short it at the bottom. So if this stock is at high level and has high short interest also, that is probably because the bigger players are shorting it. We can also look at the price performance tab here. How to use it is looking over the monthly periods if we read from left to right we see that over the one year period the percentage has increased from 11 point something to 40 something so we can see over one year period it has gone up significantly also looking at the recent periods percentage change we see that 10 days period it has gone up five day it has gone up slightly however over two day and one day period it has declined let's have a look at the technical chart now we can see that there is a bearish headwind in the daily chart now if you remember the market moves on Thursday and Friday, Thursday broad market dropped and Friday recovered. For this stock, Thursday closed with an upper tail candle with small hollow body, you can say overall indecisive or slightly bearish. And on Friday, though the market recovered, this stock actually dropped it has a bearish headwind signal. It went up sharply. There was heavy activity, but that was only on one day. Since then, it continued to go up, but with very low activity. Now, using this bearish headwind signal, 
and the subtle weakness that we saw in investment services, it could be traded very, very low risk with options backspread, put backspread. So that is a stock that I came across fundamentally looks weak. Industry showing subtle weakness and chart is showing bearish headwind signal. It doesn't have a bearish headwind setup yet. If we see the weekly price also going down, then we'll have bearishness in terms of shape or color in the weekly chart. And that will confirm the bearish headwind setup as well. Recently, I conducted a webinar along with Metastock on Q Vital. The recording is available in our YouTube channel. It is also available from our home page going to education and video. Now, while going through that session, I looked at fundamentals of this company, MACK. It's not as well known as Selji and Jaydeed, etc. Neither it is fundamentally strong. However, why I want to share this stock is that we don't always have to trade stocks which are fundamentally strong. If we look at this stock, it declined a lot in weekly backdrop chart. Remember in superior profit way, we can make trade decisions very confidently at the right edge using our unambiguous checklist. So what I saw on Thursday, the candle was already cyan in weekly, that was bullish. In daily, I saw that price was starting to go up, was at value area, had a bullish shape candle with cyan flow color. So for me, that was a very low risk by opportunity with stop just below the memory level. So I took a long position on Thursday and Friday it went up by 8% plus. In my thought, it has a potential to go much higher. It has a kind of, you can see, kind of W pattern. When the W pattern goes above the high of the left wing, sometimes in technical analysis, we say sometimes it goes up significantly. At least I'm expecting it to go to the yellow direction line. Next target will be the memory resistance line. So this is a pure technical trade, not fundamental trade. There is another interesting biotech stock ocular therapeutics. Now we all love tweets. On Friday, it dropped heavily, 26%. Somebody tweeted that they may have an issue with their next drug approval. He may know or he may not know, I have no idea. But FDA, as far as I know, don't announce their decision in advance to public. What was interesting for me is that it dropped heavily, but it stopped precisely at the memory support line. Slightly went below that and then came back up. I could easily find it from Q sonar. So I plotted it on the chart and I saw it is precisely at the memory level. Let me explain what I did using real time chart. Using Q Elite on daily chart, I drew a line at the memory support level. So this was the price point. And then I wanted to keep an eye on the stock using fine tune real time chart. I noticed that one time it came but didn't really touch the daily memory level, which is now this line. It had extreme high activity and bounced up from there. Second time it came and went below that. That is our preferred setup, false breakout. In this case, false downside breakout. When it went up, 
I took a long trade at that point. It is of course a bit late on the day, so I was not expecting to make a lot of profit from a day trade. However, I was seeing it has a very large drop, dropping with extreme high activity, stopping precisely at the memory level. And I saw the implied volatility that is options pricing was absurdly high. So when it completed a false downside breakout, I took a bullish position where I sold options. So I will make profit if the stock goes up, if the stock holds at current price, or even if it goes down slowly, because if it goes down slowly, the volatility will crash and volatility was extremely high. Let's go to trade stations, option station pro for the July expiry you can see the volatility implied volatility for options is 269 percent whereas for one month out august expiry it is 185 percent what is the historical volatility of the stocks large but compared to 269 69 percent looks really small so I thought the options prices were really inflated. Price was exactly at memory support with extreme high activity. So that led me to take a bullish position in ocular. You may also keep an eye. There may be a long opportunity using real time chart on Monday as well. Let me show you two more stocks, one graphite, one lithium. In earlier sessions, I talked about entering industries and stocks that are disrupting the market. One of the disruptive industries is the battery powered automobiles. As I mentioned before also, India has announced it will stop selling diesel cars. A very reputed European car company announced this week that they will stop creating any diesel only model from 2019, I think. France also declared they are going to slow down or stop diesel car sales. So those are all in favor of electric car companies. Other than Tesla, there are not many which are in electric car only business. Play this market disruption using stocks that are in related industries. And related industries will be graphite, lithium. I found two stocks. Now remember, if they are in disruptive industries, their growth data may not be good. Valuation data may not be good. Let's look at the graphite industry, syr.ax. Now this stock, syr.ax, listed in Australia, Sira Resources, it dropped a lot, created a watermark level in the weekly chart, price tried to go below that, came back above it, creating a false downside breakout. At the right edge, it broke out of the memory, memory resistance in weekly and sharply went up last week. If you were watching Australia market, the overall market didn't go up so strongly, but this company went up strongly. I entered somewhere in the middle of the candle. I think it has a potential to go up further. The last stock of today is the lithium stock, also in Australia. Australia has a lot of mining stocks. Another beautiful looking chart in lithium industry. It had a sharp drop, created a bullish headwind signal, went back with heavy activity in a week when Australia market was not going up. It is at memory resistance. I entered somewhere in the middle. Uh, this is in lithium industry, Galaxy Resources. And lithium is very much used in electric car batteries. So I am expecting it to break above both the memory resistance lines and go up. I thought these two were appropriate stocks to play the disruption caused in the market by electric automobiles. That is all that I wanted to share in today's class. Thank you for joining.
and I look forward to be with you in our next session. Have a great weekend and trade profitably.